Recently, Gukesh won the leg of Asia and Oceania of the Armageddon. And in that, he had this matchup against Nodirbek Abdusatarov in the finals. And they played one opening which caught my attention and I wanted to discuss it with you. Generally, they say that you mustn't uh, analyze blitz games because if you do so, there is not much depth. But I feel that this uh, perception is changing. And the reason why I would say that is because these youngsters play blitz very accurately and they also are very, very accurate overall uh, with their moves, opening preparation and so on. And I am sure that we all can learn a lot from Gukesh's opening ideas. So he starts off with knight f3, d5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2 and plays castles. And this is where after c5 I thought that he would play his favorite opening which is d3, knight d2 and e4 which is the king's Indian attack. But he goes for the move c4. D4 was played by Nodirbek because okay you can even go knight c6 but then after takes takes you have you are into Tarash territory. So he goes d4, very ambitious. Gukesh goes e3, starting the reversed Benoni. Knight c6, takes, takes, pushes his pawn to d3, bishop d6, bishop g5, h6, takes on f6, queen f6. This is all well known, knight d2. Now, my idea is to play knight e4. So queen goes back, knight, uh, pawn to a3, threatening b4, so a5, stopping it. Knight e4, bishop c7. And we reach this position where Gukesh actually reached this twice. In the first game that he played with Nodirbek, he played a very interesting move here, b4. This has been played before. It's a pawn sack. Uh, it's actually not pawn sack, you get it back. a, b, a, b, rook takes, queen takes. Now d4 is under pressure. If you take with the knight, that is check. Knight goes back, then you can take on d4. This is better for white. And if you play bishop d7, I give a check and I take on b7. Again, better for white. So, taking on b4 with the knight is bad. So, he took with the queen. Now, important to note that if you take on d4 here, I take back, queen takes and castles. But after knight d4, Gukesh had prepared this move rook b1 he played it instantly and this is a strong move rook b1 it has been played once before if knight e2 there is king f1 and we had uh ter sahakyan samuel who was actually watching this live uh he said why not bishop e5 the problem with this move is king e2 bishop a1 and rook b4 white wins i mean clearly better But okay, knight e2, king f1, there is also knight g3, h takes g3, and now bishop e5. And the position is around equal, you can say, rook b4, bishop a1. And you reach this position with white being a pawn down, but being very active. He played knight c2, and now Gukesh went queen a2, queen a3, he took on c2. And... Although the position is around equal, white's moves are easier because after castle he goes d4, b6 he goes d5, rook d8 goes h4, queen e7, knight c3 and already Bukesh is doing really well, queen e2 uh, takes here, bishop takes and Nodirbek blunders with bishop f5. So it's your move here, what would you play and how does white get a big advantage? Here, there was this very nice move, bishop f7. And I think Gukesh missed it because after takes rook b5, you lose the bishop on f5. But um, rook b5 is what Gukesh played. And after queen f8, white is better. But somehow, uh, in the end, the game ended in a draw. Knight d5, I mean... Gukesh was completely winning here with rook a7, f7 hanging, rook c7. He managed to just completely destroy his opponent. This is hanging. And here just knight g6, king g7, queen f5 would have finished the game. But he went queen e2. And later on, 
somehow miraculously Noderbeck managed to hold the draw. So <clears throat> with this result, now within like few minutes, there was another game to be played. And Gukesh once again had the white pieces. Once again, they repeated the same line. D4, E3, they took. He went bishop g5, he took here. Knight d2, a3, knight e4, bishop c7. And in this position, now Gukesh, in a very important moment, played the move c5. Castles, rook c1, e5 was played, and knight ft2. Now, the idea is to play knight c4 and knight d6. And it was very important for black here to push f5. Because that would make Gukesh give up a pawn, knight c4 and rook e1. Interesting position. But the main thing is instead of f5, Nadirbek goes bishop e6. And then comes the move knight c4. Very strong move. Rook because rook a b8. And rook e1, again a powerful move. And the knight jumps in. And with this, Gukesh actually got a great advantage. And he went on to convert it very well. b5 was a very um, ambitious move. And after cb6, this could have been around equal. But instead, Gukesh finds the move. What's the good move here? Bishop takes c6. Takes knight e5. Pawn up. And here, offering a trade of queens. Oops, sorry. Queen f3. Take, take. Knight f5. And he finishes our, it off very accurately. Takes on d4. And knight f5. Rook here. Rook e1. f6. Rook e7. And after knight d6. Nodirbek was almost running out of time. He took here and got checkmated. So this entire line, the reversed Benoni, you first start off with knight f3, g3, bg2, castles. Then you break in the center with e3, take here, play d3. And then go bishop g5, take on f6, put knight d2, and then expand on the queen side and uh, get a great position. So this is how Gukesh managed to use good opening preparation to win. And I hope that this small little... Uh, video with two games of Gukesh will give you some food for thought and some opening ideas that you can try in your game. This is Agasha signing off. Bye-bye.